Okay, guys, so we are officially starting now. From now on, it's being recorded and it will be on YouTube. Hi, Aruna. Hi. Hi, Hi and hello, all the participants. This webinar has been organized by the Weekly Fasting Group, which is um, an international WhatsApp group where we cultivate the habit of fasting for between 24 and 36 hours every week. That's the main purpose of the group, just to fast every week, one day a week, and to have fun all together as a group. So everyone fasts for their own reasons. Some people fast more for the spiritual reasons. Other people want to cultivate this habit for the sake of self-discipline and other people for different health reasons, for the dietary reasons of the even. So each one has their own reasons, but we are all together as a group, just having fun, fasting one day a week. So in case this idea appeals to you, you will find my contact details, my WhatsApp number. My name is Arik. I'm the facilitator of the group. And you're welcome to send me the WhatsApp message with your name and I will happily add you. And today we have with us Aruna, who is a meditation and spiritual teacher, the teacher of positive thinking and many other things. And also she's a fasting practitioner. And we will just uh, get straight to the webinar. So Aruna, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we can just start with a moment of silence. And it's just a moment in which um, we just be present here and now and um, just really calm our mind so the mind can be receptive to receive. And just to be in the now moment. So maybe Eric, we can uh, mute everyone, so. Yes, yes, that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, thank you. So yes, a big thank you to Eric for inviting me to just share some of my thoughts, ideas, um, and things that I've learned on my journey. So actually, I would like to start off by talking about food. Uh, because as we know, what are we fasting from? We are, we are when we physically fast, we are fasting from food. And if you think about it, why is it that we go to work? We go to work to feed the stomach. That's one of the main reasons. If, if there's no income, then we feel, okay, how can I purchase the food? So one of the main reasons why <clears throat> we were going to work is so that we can pay for our food. See, earlier we used to harvest our food. We used to live on a farm or we used to have some backyard. Maybe we could have survived from that. But now we uh, work to eat, let's say. Now, if we just look at the whole food industry, and I'm going to actually presume that, uh, you know, we are vegetarian or vegan. I'm not even going to go into the, the meat uh, area. Like, I'm just going to assume that most of us have, already come to some of these conclusions where we assume that a vegetarian and vegan diet is better than a meat diet. But what I want to say is even the vegetables and the fruits, if we see how they are produced and if we see the energy that goes behind it. So for example, um, how they are uh, grown uh, including all the pesticides and then not just the physical uh, stuff that's put on it but the 
let's say emotional stuff that's put on it. So for example, um, the greed, the attachment, the ego, the arrogance, possessiveness, uh, then there's competition, like my tomatoes are better than yours or mine should be more expensive than yours. And all along the way, from the time it's sown to the time it's picked, to the time that it's carried across waters or the air, by the time it gets to us, how many energies have touched that food? And then of course, you know, it takes only seconds to consume that food which is why actually uh, we who are yogis, who are meditators, we actually offer our food. Like we say, we give grace to it, we offer to God. And we do this because we believe that we are actually, let's say, <laughs> purifying the energy around that food so that when we eat the food, we are actually eating um, good food pure food. Of course, um, whatever's on it, you try your best to remove it by soaking it, by putting bicarbonate of soda and all that. But um, it's very important that we do this little ceremony around our food before we eat it. So whether it's your cooked food or whether it's raw food and even water, you know, even like before you might um, take a, a zip of water, just to give it that, you know, pure thought and say, thank you, God, or this is going to nourish my soul, not just my body, and to really, you know, take it in with, with that attitude of really gratitude and appreciation. And if you think about food, food also um, has actually <laughs> brought down many empires. Food has brought down many kingdoms because as one gets tempted with food, as one is lured into food, then one becomes so gluttonous with food that then they can become heavy, they fall asleep when they're meant to go to battle or there isn't clarity of thinking, there isn't clarity of decision-making and that's how then they end up losing the, the war or, or the battle. And not only that, but um, I was thinking, look at children, how people uh, lure children when they, when they kidnap them. And it's again with this treat of a chocolate or a sweet or, and again, they're luring the, the children with this temptation of, you know, come and we'll give you this treat and, um, and well, you know, you'll be happy. <laughs> And not only that, but I remember watching a BBC documentary in which it was about cocoa beans. And um, of course, being vegan, I'm trying to only eat um, vegan chocolate. Um, but I remember this documentary about cocoa. And as you know, cocoa beans are used to make chocolate. And so this man, the, the reporter was showing the farmer in Africa that uh, do you know how your cocoa beans end up? And he had no clue. And so he had this big gunny bag of cocoa pods. And he was telling the reporter that I sell this big gunny bag for $2, right? The equivalent of $2. And so this um, reporter pulled out a packet of biscuits and on one side, of course, biscuit, the other side, some chocolate. And he said, here, taste this. He said, do you know how much this packet costs? And he said something like, it costs like two to $3. So this little packet costs the same as this huge uh, gunny bag. So again, it's not fair trade, right? This is one point I want to make. The second point is then when the reporter and the driver were driving away, then there was this little boy running after them so the driver stopped and um, they started talking to the boy. The translator was there and the boy must have been, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, something like that. And he came crying and he was telling the reporter, look, I want to go home. I want to be with my mother. 
So again, these children were kidnapped, you could say, and put on these farms to work, um, to produce these things. And of course, basically given nothing or maybe just a meal. Um, so I'm just making you aware of really what are the energies that go on behind our food, um, which will lead us to think more about the food we take and why we should really pay more attention to it. This, this is really my point. Then when we think of food, and I know others in the fasting group are, are more experts on this, but I will just make one point that in Ayurveda, right, we have three types of food. So we have sattvic, rajasvic, and tamsic. So tamsic are, of course, you know, foods. And, and again, why do we have these three categories? Let's say bad, medium, and, and good. So we have these categories, again, uh, if you think about it deeply, it's actually about illuminating the mind, the foods that actually keep us trapped in the body versus the foods that help us to fly in our meditation, that keep us light in our spirit, uh, that, you know, demand less sleep or that, you know, are, that enable us to really connect uh, to what we want to, to to feel states of minds that we want to easily. And of course, these are foods that are mostly natural foods. These are, let's say, sun ripened foods versus uh, fire ripened foods. Uh, let's just say more natural foods to put it lightly. And again, if you want to do more research on that yourself, you can. Which is why when we are fasting, Okay, so let me come to now the, the, the fasting now. So when we are actually fasting, there is such a strong correlation between mental and the physical. Now, we all know, and again, I don't need to repeat all this, but yes, different faiths fast for different reasons. And every faith, you know, whether it's uh, Buddhism, Baha'i, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, every faith, talk, Sikhism, every faith talks about a period at some point in our life, whether it's particular days of the week, certain months of the year, that we should practice some sort of fasting. And why is it that we should be fasting? <laughs> so it's not just to please God and say, thank you, God, but it's so that we can actually have more time for ourselves. And we feel this when, when I'm fasting or when we are fasting here, yeah, the kitchen is quiet and there's no noise, no pots banging um, and it's clean. Um, so there's a lot of time for the self. And, and remember, we shouldn't fill this time now with things to do, right? We should actually be more, let's say in prayer, in meditation, contemplation, reflection, uh, journaling or just looking at the self, we should really dedicate some of that time. That's real, real fasting. But uh, yeah, so we can do it for religious reasons. We can do it to detox, to cleanse. Um, I also do it to increase my willpower because imagine there comes a time when, you know, there isn't food, then what am I going to do? Panic. So I want to actually exercise the muscles of my mind to get used to not having when, when or if there is a time like that. So anyway, many reasons and many faiths talking about fasting. And uh, also, Eric, I was uh, reading that Judaism, um, when the bride and groom are to get married, they also fast on that day um, to exercise uh, atonement or let's say purifying themselves before, before tying that bond. So yes, fasting is also used as a form of purification. So it's not just purification of the body. Let's come to the mind. So it's also purification of the mind. Now let's draw some parallels, okay? So for example, there is something called mono fruit fasting, which means that you only have one fruit uh, all day or that week or whatever, like some people do three weeks of grape juice. Uh, I was telling Eric, I did uh, six days of just orange, orange and lemon. And, and actually, that's what I do. When I do juice, I only do 
um, the orange one and because they're more in season now. Plus I like it, I love the citrus uh, taste. So when we do mono fasting physically, it's for the purpose that, okay, the body gets used to it. And if it's liquid, again, you know, the body is not taxing itself. But also if we take the parallel for the, for the mind, we have to be in one thought throughout the day. And we have to be in a powerful thought. So just as we might, you know, focus on one fruit that is, um, let's say, serving us, that, I mean, serving us, meaning we like, and we know it's, you know, detoxing us. In the same way, we need to choose one thought and stay with that thought throughout the day. So this thought could be a simple thought, like uh, I'm a powerful soul, I'm a peaceful soul, uh, I'm a loving soul, I'm kind, uh, I'm compassionate. I mean, you can decide on a power or a virtue or a quality and how much can you really stay in that thought throughout the day? See, when we focus on just one thought, okay, I'm gonna get you all maybe to just look at your finger like this. If you just focus on your finger. So when I get you to just look at your finger, I have automatically gotten you to not look or focus on anything around you, right? When you just focus on this finger, so instead of me saying, don't look at the table, don't look at the chair, don't look at the light, don't look at the plant, don't look at the lampshade, don't look at the picture. What am I saying? No, focus on this one thing. And that is what meditation is. Meditation is focus. Meditation is concentration. In Hindi, actually meditation is dhyan. And dhyan means to pay attention. So when we are sitting in dhyan, which is meditation, literally meditation, it also means to pay attention to one thing, to focus, to concentrate on one thing. So as I focus on one thing, my mind has naturally moved away from other things. That's why I'm saying when we choose one thought in the day that I really want to embody and really make it me, right? So when you've been thinking about this thought all day, at the end of the day, you won't have to think. So you won't have to keep saying to yourself or reminding yourself, I'm peaceful, I'm peaceful, I'm peaceful. No, you will become the embodiment of peace. And also think about it. When I choose to think a positive thought or a powerful thought, then I've naturally moved away from negative thought and waste thought. So I don't have to say now, okay, let me stop this thought. Let me stop this thought. A powerful thought is like a light that goes on in the soul. And it's like this light. When I walk into the room, I don't practice pushing out the darkness. In fact, darkness is just absence of light. So I'm not pushing the dark. There's no darkness to push away. As soon as I switch on the light, as soon as I light a candle, as soon as the sun comes out, the darkness is dispelled. So in the same way, as soon as I create one very powerful thought, then I dispel the darkness, let's say, or the negativity or the waste or the worry or the depression or the hate or the revenge or anything negative, jealousy, all that I, I eradicate from my mind. And actually the word fast in uh, Hindi is actually vrat. Now, vrat also means a determined thought. So when I'm fasting, I'm also creating a very powerful determined thought, right? So that's what I'm saying. When I choose to fast, and of course, there, there will be what we call maya, right? So when I decide to do something, of course, there will be these, uh, you know, like we say, the angel and the devil. So angel says, okay, fast. And then... The devil says, no, no, you know, you're going to get hungry, you're going to get weak, you're going to go low in energy, you need the energy. So there's going to be that negative voice telling me, no, no, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it today, start tomorrow, right? The diet always starts tomorrow. <laughs> so no, we have to stay determined. And I have to say, no, no matter what I've decided. And that's why actually I, I told Eric, because Eric does his fasting on Friday and Saturday. 
and for us that is the weekend so I said Eric that doesn't suit us so we here find the middle of the week uh, the best so between Tuesday and Thursday we do our fasting because it's more convenient so you choose your time whatever's convenient and really um, you know uh, choose to, to do, uh, do that and so regarding the food and the fasting, so it's really a conquering of the mind. It's not the food. And this is another one of my experiences when I was fasting. It's not that you're hungry. You're not feeling physically hungry, but the mind is thinking of those chips. <laughs> the mind is thinking of the samosa. The mind is thinking of the pakora, right? These are names of Indian foods, Eric. So this is what, you know, the, the mind is saying, oh, it would be nice to have this. So when we begin the fast, we have to conquer the mind. And that's where I find the, the similarities uh, so strong. I have to conquer the mind. And in Hinduism, they say, if you conquer the mind, right? Man jit, jagat jit. So if you conquer the mind, you've conquered the world. And I've mentioned this in another talk that, yeah, it's really mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. And when I conquer this thought and I say, it's okay with me, I don't need it. I don't care what others say. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay determined. Okay, even if I start losing weight, others will say, oh, you're losing weight. You're looking weak. It doesn't matter. I'm going to stay determined. My mind is strong. It's made up. And, you know, I'm going to do it. So, yeah, fast, uh, mental fasting is really about conquering um, the mind. And as I conquer the mind, I conquer the thoughts. I also conquer the body. Now, also, uh, intention. Intention is very important. And again, intention is connected with the mind. With what intention are you fasting? So as I said earlier, some do detox, some do self-discipline, some to increase willpower, some for religious reasons, some fast to find a good husband. <laughs> I don't know what's the connection, but some fast every Monday, but in the hope that they will find a good husband. So anyway, uh, some fast to please God. That's another reason. But anyway, what is our mental? What's the mental reason why I should fast? from negative thoughts? What's the reason I should fast from worry and uh, thoughts that bring me down, thoughts that make me weak? So I, again, have to have a very strong reason why I should fast. In other words, the intention. Aim is different, right? My aim is, okay, I want to become cool and calm and peaceful, right? This is my aim. That's the end result. But the intention, why am I doing it? I'm doing it, yes, because I want to become more powerful from inside. I want to really flex the muscles of the mind. Physically, we are, we are flexing the muscles of the stomach and whatever, intestines, whatever, the body. But mentally, mentally meaning the soul, I want to really empower the soul. And so let me give you a glimpse of what that looks, what I think that looks like. So basically... I'm in control of my thoughts. In other words, I choose every thought I create. It's not that something triggers me and I'm reactive and that's why I create the thought. No, every thought, I'm the master of every thought. I'm creating, I have a choice. I'm exercising that choice. I'm totally responsible for every thought I create. Then I have the big heart. Right, I fast to create the right thought state in the right, you know, um, mental state, so that I can continue to have a big heart, so that I can continue to forgive and let go, so that I can practice the law of attraction. In other words, I create a thought and I bring that to me. Right, many of you must have noticed, like when you create a powerful thought that I want this. For example, I want a parking space, or I want to get first in the queue, or I, I need, I've got less time, I've got to get this job done and somehow somebody comes and helps you or something happens where it just sorts itself out. This is you attracting ease and comfort into your life. And we do that with the power of our thoughts. 
So really, when we are meditating over a long period of time, then we can direct our thoughts. In fact, there's another thing I heard recently, and that is when eight people meditate together for 10 minutes with the same intention, then you can create an effect. And there are groups of people that are doing this. So for example, let's say uh, somebody is not well. Say somebody has some uh, frozen shoulder or something, or even something terminal or whatever, whatever. Let's say, let's take the frozen shoulder. So if somebody has a fro frozen shoulder, that person plus seven others, it could be on Zoom, it could be in a, in a room, sit together for 10 minutes vibing that this person becomes free from their frozen shoulder. Or you just visualize them in good health, in positive health, good health, okay? I would offer myself for an experiment because I have a frozen shoulder. <laughs> so if, if you want to try it out, here it is. <laughs> okay. So maybe we can do that at the end, yeah. So anyway, yeah, um, and so the, uh, this person who was telling me this is from Australia and she was telling me that she's doing that and uh, people actually have reported uh, good results that they do feel a difference and a change. And of course, then you keep doing it, say every few days or every week and uh, it really helps. So anyway, intention is very important. Now, let me just add here that sometimes what happens is uh, we fast but then we can become very fanatical fasters, you know? Uh, and so we are very hard and fast. So let's say, for example, even when uh, Christians are fasting for Lent, for example, so they can look at every packet, you know, and say, oh, does this have any um, dairy pro product in it or whatever? But the, the real reason for fasting is, am I really fasting from my greed? Am I fasting from my attachment? Am I fasting from my ego, arrogance? Am I fasting from my lust? This is the real reason for fasting. So again, it comes back to the mind, where, whereby is there that self-discipline? Is there that self-control? And when I'm really focusing on mastering my thoughts, then I'm not a slave to the things around me. And this is, this is the Raj Yoga meditation, which the Brahma Kumaris teaches, which I'm associated with. Raj Yoga meditation is about becoming the Raja, the master over I, the self. So we believe this body is a kingdom, okay? The senses are the ministers and the soul is the master, the Raja over this kingdom. And so am I able to master my senses? In other words, see only that which I want to see. You know, hear and listen to only that I want to. Or do I say, oh, okay, another 10 more minutes of gossip. Do I speak only that which I want to? Do I do? This is another thing with fasting and how we can build integrity in the soul, where my thought, my word, and my action is the same. When, when we see, and even in this group, there are some really advanced fasters. And when you see that they've been fasting, right, without eating anything, without drinking anything, for five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 days, it's very admirable. And I have a lot of respect for them. We don't always, you know, um, you know, clap and, and send emojis in the group uh, because we build traffic. But certainly, I certainly have a lot of respect for whoever can abstain from, you know, food and water and, and have that inner willpower. So this is what I mean, like when the soul is able to master itself, it's able to master the body and the senses then yes, it, it actually warrants <laughs> um, uh, integrity, let's say, because the soul is mastering the self, the body. 
And let me add here that um, fasting shouldn't be seen as a punishment for the body. Yeah, but when we're fasting, and I mentioned this in the group once, Eric, if you know, it's like the body has to be brought in. When I have the thought to fast, it's like the body has to be cajoled. It's like you're telling a child, okay, come on, let's play, let's do this. So the body has to be cajoled into accepting this decision. So I need to tell the body, okay, you know what? We're going to start this from tomorrow. You're not going to have food, stomach, you're going to be okay. Like it's almost like this conversation and preparing the body and, and telling the body, you know what? It's going to be really good for you. So it's this self-talk that is going on inside of me that uh, what I'm going to do is going to be beneficial. It's really good. And I'm going to get a lot out of it. Okay. Um, also, the other connection between um, <laughs> fasting and the physical. So when I'm, when I'm eating only the best of foods, okay, so let's say fruits or juice or just water or, or air, if you're a breatharian, then you are already giving the best, right, to your body. And so the, the body is then cleansing out itself the stuff that it doesn't need. In the same way, when I, the soul, am giving the right types of thoughts to my mind and thinking just good wishing thoughts, well wishing thoughts, then all the other karma or my karmic accounts with others are being sorted out and eliminated very naturally whereby then there isn't the sorrow. In other words, I have so much inner self-respect that I don't take sorrow. Somebody could be giving me sorrow, but I'm not taking the sorrow. Or again, I'm not taking uh, sorrow from insult, or I'm not taking sorrow from being left out of something. In other words, I'm building such an inner stamina, inner immunity, the soul immunity, that anything that happens out there is, is not affecting me. I'm becoming strong. And I read somewhere that, yeah, if we are fasting for 24 hours, we are at the height of our physical immunity. Of course, the more you fast, the more you build that immunity. But, you know, 24 hours is, is pretty good. So imagine if the soul is fasting from any kind of negativity, Imagine the soul immunity that you are building where you stay unaffected. And most of the questions that come to me are mostly about relationships. People taking sorrow from small, small things. This one said that, that one didn't say that, that one didn't remember that. I mean, yes, it looks small, but somehow because we're so caught up emotionally that it becomes a big thing for us. So how to create that emotional detachment? It's, a, it's again about exercising this uh, inner willpower of the soul. Do you see? And then let me say that we believe that the soul is actually the, the god or the goddess or the idol, the deity, however you want to see it, god, goddess with a small g, in this body, which is the temple. I mean, this is the only body that we have. <laughs> we're not going to get another one now <laughs> and so we need to you know really truly respect this body and so it's not just about feeding it the right things but it's about giving it the right sleep it's about not stressing the body you know don't fill so much into your calendar don't try to be a superman superwoman and try to do a lot and then stress out because you can't do it i mean there are physical limitations COVID has actually encouraged all of us to slow down and really look at ourselves. It's given us more time. In fact, even in Kuwait now, there is, there is curfew from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. So, you know, yeah, we're all here. <laughs> and we, meet, we meet more often and we chat more often. So, yes, it's given us a, a time to look at ourselves. So let's use that time rather than, you know, let, let's slow down. Let's really slow down. I think it was, um, what's, what's that? Um, what is Nick, Nick Tan, 
something that that monk right miktan something um so yeah he was saying that really if we slow down and of course this is our experience my experience but if we slow down in what we are doing and if we slow down eating then we can actually elongate our lifespan and um in uh, i think hippocrates or no no this well of course hippocrates said let your food be thy medicine but no the chinese have this proverb that um you know your your water should be chewed and your food should be drunk so in other words your water should be mixed with the saliva before it goes down and your food should be chewed so much that it it is drunk it is not you don't just half eat it very fast <laughs> and just gobble it but take your time to chew it and of course eating in silence is the best of course right eating in silence is the best i know that everybody wants to be social and active and but the problem with that is you see when we are talking and eating like just plain talking not even arguing okay if we are talking and eating then we are not in tune with our sense of satisfaction we do not know that we have become fulfilled or the stomach is full now and so we're talking and you know we just keep oh yeah yeah that's right yeah oh yeah and you know we keep eating without being in touch with the sense of uh, fullness and that's why when we eat in silence and we eat slowly we actually need less okay so try i mean you can only experiment with these things and uh, and and try and also i want to say that i think it was imam ali who said that um yeah do not make your stomach um a graveyard for animals and what he was advocating was of course um you know eating um healthy food or let's say vegetarian food and of course mental power so let's come to that now eric let's let's talk about now the positive um affirmations yeah and maybe after that i can do a little um meditation and um yeah so the po- yeah and i also do this on a regular basis and um you can also do it at home in your free time or whenever you meditate but this is like you know constant affirmation constant affirmation of who you are not who you want to be it's not something in the future but real constant affirmation of who you are and really being it and really affirming it to yourself and actually maybe eric well, let's let us do that now if you don't mind like so i'll do it in a kind of meditative tone so yeah if everybody can just sit uh, relax try not to hold on to anything and i'm going to i'm just going to say a bunch of affirmations randomly as they come to my mind and i would like you to just slowly quietly in your mind just repeat them to yourself and and repeat them but repeat them with this conviction with this belief that i am that okay and really try to feel it so it's not a runa saying it to you you are saying it to yourself so i'm just going to guide you through that but you are going to really say it to yourself okay so yeah just sit comfortably so let us start with these few basic ones which is I am a peaceful being. So just say it and really feel it. I am a peaceful being. I am powerful and strong.
I am a precious diamond. I am special. I am full and abundant. Everything comes to me easily. I have enough funds for my well being. I have pure self respect. I have enough love for everyone who comes in front of me. I cooperate with everyone easily. I have the inner strength to deal with whatever comes in front of me. I take things lightly and easily. I choose. I am the master of my life. My will is strong. I am healthy. I am my perfect size. I am beautiful inside and outside. I'm patient and I wait. I am light as in lightness and I am light as in bright, sparkling light. Okay, let's just come back to this moment. Yeah, so you can see how um, as you practice this more and more, as you practice this more and more, you can see how you can really exercise the muscles of the mind. 
I want to tell you a story um, to kind of point this out. Uh, so there was one of these monks, Dalai Lama monks, and he was caught somewhere in China. And he was caught and of course tortured and kept for some years. And then he was made free. And he came back to Tibet and he met with the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama asked him, so was there ever a challenging moment? And he said, yes, my Lord, there was. And the Dalai Lama said, in what way? And he said, well, there were a few times where I felt, of course, when he was being tortured, I felt I was going to lose my compassion. So imagine, imagine how much he had exercised compassion, that he was trying to hold on to the compassion. <laughs> and we are trying to, you know, let go of our hate. This is the difference. So that's why we have to be on this side of the camp where I'm so in charge of my thoughts that I'm really mastering my every feeling because thoughts are the basis of my feelings. Feelings are our, our barometer for where we are at in life. Okay. But where did that start from? That started from the thought. Now, the thing is, the thoughts are invisible. Or, or so we might like to think. Thoughts, we can't see the thoughts, but we can feel the, the vibration. We can feel the aura. If somebody walks into the room and they are angry, they don't need to speak to tell you that they are angry. You can feel the vibe. You can feel the energy, you can feel the tension. And if a yogi walks into the room, somebody calm, somebody peaceful, somebody in self-control, if they walk into the room, you can feel their vibe, you can feel their energy. So we cannot say that thoughts are completely invisible, no. Just as when somebody um, who is fasting, you can tell from their body that they are fasting. You will be able to tell from their, their size, you will be able to tell from the skin, you know, like how clean. I mean, these are natural, obvious, obvious, any obvious to the, to the eyes. In the same way, our vibration is obvious to, to the soul. So, yeah, we can't say that nobody knows what's going on in my mind. No, it's uh, our face, our, um, you know, the body vibration is, um, is the index of the mind. So maybe, Eric, I can stop here and take some questions or if anybody has any comments or... Okay, guys, let's open to questions. Please feel free to ask. Yeah, uh, Om Shanti, may I ask the question? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, my name is Ritu, I am from India. Uh, my question is that uh, I'm already following Brahma Kumari from last many years, and uh, I do follow the vegetarian and all the protocols which we, are, uh, which we should follow in the diet. But if I go for the fasting thing, sometimes I try. I try many times actually. But then I go low on energy. Uh, if I have to go to gym, then I may not able to perform good in that or maybe may, may not able to uh, do the dance or uh, uh, do the uh, normal activities like working. Right now, working from home is going on everywhere. So fasting, I, I try and I do also. But this is the challenge I every time face. So what is the solution for this low energy thing? This is on what day of your fast? Any day which I feel like. If I feel like, you know, if I have no, to... I, no, 
I mean, is it the first day, second day? Because after a few days, uh, we actually get better with our energy. This is my experience. So if it's the first couple of days, then you just maybe need to take your time. Maybe Eric, you also want to answer that. I think there are more experienced pastors than me here because uh, yeah. I'm doing mostly one day a week. That's what I'm doing. So I didn't have, haven't had much experience with longer than that. So if, if there are more people here who are more experienced pastors, then you're welcome to answer. In our, in our WhatsApp group, we have lots of very experienced. Yes, please, anyone, please answer me. This, this is the challenge which I fa face. So I want to overcome this challenge, this low energy thing. I mostly go on the uh, coconut water or the juices. This is the way I do the diet. I don't eat anything, but I go on the juices and the coconut water. But I always feel uh, the very low energy to do anything. Please, anyone in the group, welcome. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Name is Bharat. I'm from California and I do this about three to four times a week, but I do it only for four hours every day. So I limit my, so that I do have the energy. And after that, I just don't go and splurge after the four hours is over, but I just limit it to four hours a day because again, I'm working, I have other things and uh, I'm a working person too. So to keep my energy, I currently fast four hours a day. Om Shanti. Oh. Is it this four hours you do you do three to four times in a week? Am I right, brother? Correct. Four times a week, four hours a day. That's my current level. Okay. Okay. That's a one good one. Um, Ritu, yeah. Let me say something. Um, see, like I said, I mean, I I've, I've actually done. Okay, I've done master cleanse for two weeks. I've done like. Um, I've eaten raw food for like six, seven weeks. Um, and I've done this juice fasting for a week or uh, 10 days. I mean, so my experience is that the first few days are, are difficult, okay? And you take your time with that. That's why I'm saying the first few couple of days, you just have to be prepared to rest or sleep or, or go slow, not take on too much. Like sometimes I say, okay, I have time. I'm going to take on the gardening and you start moving big pots and, and you get tired. But then my experience is once you cross that two, second and third day hurdle, then I, I don't know, somehow you're just more energetic. As I said, you don't have hunger pains. Um, you just drink something. I mean, last time I did the fast, so I was low on energy, Ritu. And um, Hethel, who's also in the fasting group, she suggested that we should be moving, like moving the body. And she said, you can dance or jump up and down or whatever. And so I took myself for a walk, even though I was low in energy, I took myself out. We have the sea here. I went to the sea wall and uh, I walked. I walked uh, like five kilometers and I took in the sea air. And honestly, yes, when I came back, I felt more energy. And that's what I realized that movement and uh, oxygen were my food. So you might like to try that. You might like to just give yourself a couple of days break, not break, I mean, just do things, but don't take on more extra. Don't be too happy. Yes, uh, Didi, I've got two answers from you. One is uh, slowly and steadily, your body will get, uh, you know, adjust to that. One answer is this. And second answer, which you have given us, it's a, in a very mindful way, like, you know, when we go out, let's say uh, right now I'm on the beach side. So if I go, go for a walk on the beach side or on the nature walk, then we get another kind of energy from the nature. So exactly. that's the second thing, I guess you wanted to tell. From there also, we get the energy and good vibes. Exactly. Thanks for that. And, and this is what we have to test, you see, like that's, that's when I tested it, I realized, yes, oxygen became my energy. Like we always think I need to put some food in my mouth, but no, there are other energies that we have to experiment with, you see? So yeah, try that. Yeah. Um, Shanti Arunaji, uh, Bharat again, but I wanted to thank you very much, you know, like, you know, in the beginning when you said you know, sometimes our mind wants to pick up samosas and pakoras and all that stuff. And that is exactly what was happening when you come back from work. 
you want to munch on something. So I started my fasting from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So which means that's the time I will not munch anything. And so far it's been successful, but thank you very much, Om Shanti. Very good, thank you. Om Shanti Karna Ben. this is Indu from London. Uh, my problem is if I fast, then I get a lot of acidity. You know, my stomach goes into acid and then I just feel very sort of, you know, uncomfortable. I can't sleep at night and, you know. So what is the solution for acidity? Yeah, yeah, I'm not a doctor. Um, all I can suggest and what, what I do know is, of course, take lots of water. But what I do know is when we have these ailments in the body, mm. sometimes we just have to um, stay with the fast long enough. And then the body's own um, mechanism, healing mechanism kicks in. Mm. See, sometimes what happens is we give up halfway because we're feeling yeah. these things. But yes. I can honestly tell you from my experience that if I stop putting stuff into the body and give the body time, it will definitely begin to heal itself. Mm. And the last thing we should do is, is, you know, again, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, don't quote me, but uh, for something like acidity, I don't know how extreme it is for you, but don't jump to the medicine. You know, it's like when we fast, we may also get a headache. Now, mm. it doesn't mean I take a tablet. Headache means that the liver is detoxing. So mm. then I just need to drink more water and just be peaceful, calm, uh, try to be with yourself. Okay, go to bed early. But of course, avoid the medicine, but just stay with it and just go through it. And really the body begins to heal itself. This is really my experience. Mm. But again, Else, say something, please. Yeah, let me know. Anuban, can I just jump in here? Yeah. Um, concerning the acidity in the stomach, what the uh, uh, what, what Ben can do is to take a warm water with some yeah. lemon, because lemon juice is actually alkaline. Right. Al alkaline will actually diffuse the acid produced by your stomach. So when you feel that you're going to have more acidity in your stomach, have a little bit of lemon with warm water. It doesn't have to be a whole glass full, but just sufficient to ensure that you're feeling comfortable in your stomach because the alkaline will actually dilute the acid into water. Right, yeah, good point. But okay. I was finding that the lemon is giving me arthritis, you know? Lemon is quite, you know, you know, honestly, I took it for a year, honestly, and then I started feeling my hands are getting arthritic. So, then I stopped the lemon. Lemon was good in the morning. You know, I used to take lemon with some honey in it. Uh, with are, you, are, you, are you really sure it's lemon and not tomato? <laughs> oh, I see. I yeah. think arthritis will be caused by tomatoes rather than the lemon. If oh, you have, okay. it's, it's, the, it's the pectin in, in, in the tomatoes that mm. can give you uh, crystals in your, in your uh, bone joints, really. So... Okay. If you're feeling mm -hmm. that, cut down on tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, which, whichever form, whether they're tomato, tomato juice, fresh tomatoes, anything like that, just reduce them. It doesn't mean you can't take them, but just reduce the amount of tomatoes you're having. It's the mm -hmm. pectin that you need to control. But I think uh, having lemon just a little bit, not too much, but only when mm -hmm. you're feeling that you need to have some because you've eaten some rich food that is going mm -hmm. to, you know, fried food or other stuff, which you know you, is going to cause you acid. So try to have food which will not create so much uh, acid in your stomach. But if you've taken those kind of foods, then counter it with having some sort of uh, lemony uh, food with it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If you take lime, it's, it's cool. It's very cooling for the body as well. And lime. That's also alkaline. Right, yeah. Thank you. you can have yogurt drink. That will be, that will be just as effective. You know, in Hindi, you can have that to, to contract the acid. So basically, England, any England drink, is cold, no, for lassi. England is too cold for lassi. Yes, but you're, you're, not, you're not going to drink large quantities. You're, I, think, 
I think everything has <laughs> has an effect on the body. You just got to find the right balance, yes. really. When uh, that's all it is. That's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But you see, in the what you are saying is, I got this, so I'm I'm taking this to counteract that and that to counteract that. Like it's it's like a domino effect. You see. Mm. So honestly, this is why. Um, like really, if you do more regular fasting, mm. then you're giving the chance to the body to just stop and uh, and you know kick in effectively its own healing mechanism. Like we we taking all this other stuff, thinking that the body needs help, and actually the body doesn't need help. The body just needs to be. You know, when you fall sick, what's the first thing that happens is you don't feel like eating like the digestion just stops. Mm. And that's, that's the body's way of telling you, you know what, stop, I, I got to take care of me. Don't give me any extra work to do. Um, mm. it, it's like when the, when the cook, you know, in the kitchen, like she's not well, the, the kitchen is closed down, you know? So, yeah. yeah, so we've got to really try. Casting is really like, um, as I said, it's not a punishment, it should be a reward. It should be a reward for the body that look you've been working hard all week and uh, i'm going to give you a break and take the day off you know this is how we should be really talking to the body and the stomach mm. so is it okay to have a fruit or is it uh, easier to have juices you know if i'm new to fasting what is easier yeah so what uh yeah what we are taught is um yeah go on juices first because okay if you want to, de- well, fruit you can do also, but juices help to detox faster, and especially mm-hmm. citrus juices help to detox faster, which is okay. why, you know, as I told you, I was taking the orange and then afterwards putting in some lemon. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, try to stick to one fruit because again, combinations of fruit, especially in your case, can cause mm. more. So just try to stick to one fruit and just have a lot of that all day you know and that's cleansing in itself but if can you, want- you have, have tea can you have tea with it uh well i don't have anything i mean some people mm. have herbal teas but i don't have chai or coffee anything okay uh, i don't yeah may i jump in again yeah um what i found is that instead of having normal black tea try to have green tea instead because that's oh. more soothing on your stomach as well Try to just have some green tea. That will mm-hmm. help. And the other thing I think, um, I don't know, Ben, I want you to just add, it slipped my mind just now. Um, I'm sorry, I missed that point. But anyway, in terms of tea, you can have, oh, yes, I remember. You were saying that you start your fasting, uh, getting the body used to juices. Can I just say that I have tried juices, but what happened was my sugar levels went up. And because I'm diabetic, that wasn't mm. advantageous for me. So if, if you are suffering from di- diabetics, then you've got to avoid having too many juices in, in yeah. any form because the um, uh, fr- fruitious sugar levels will go up and that will cause your diabetes blood, le- blood level to go up. So you've got mm. to be careful if you have medical um, uh, background of diabetics, you've got to understand what food you can take or not take when you're controlling your fasting. So it's very important to understand that because if you do a fast and you're diabetic, the problem will be your blood sugar levels will go up automatically yeah. because the body is craving for that. So sometimes but, for diabetics, you have to be careful. Uh, but is your name Uv- Uvi? Yes, yeah. it is Uvi, yes. Uvi, yeah. But Uvi, I've been told that because it's, um, it's natural sugar, it digests easily. It's it's not like uh, gulab jamun and uh, jalebi and you know, so I, I, I to, yeah, I, um, easily into the bloodstream. No, well, I, I I did that. You see, Didi, and I went to the doctor, and she had my three three monthly checkup, and she said, "What have you been doing?" I said, "I've been going, having on more fruit." You asked me to cut down on sugar, so I've been having things like grapes and oranges and apples, and she said. That is still sugar. Sugar is whatever mm-hmm. form it is, it's sugar. The only thing she said is what happens is that the fruit sugar spikes very quickly and then comes mm-hmm. down within two hours. Whereas the other sugar will spike very quickly, but it may take six hours for the body to absorb. 
that's the only difference so True. you will get, you will get a spike uh, coming coming in, into your bloodstream uh, i'm just saying be be careful how much you how much of a spike you're doing and it could be that if you have a little bit of fruit the spike goes up a little bit but after 2 hours have a little bit of fruit but it's that's not really fasting then so you really got to talk to your gp and find out that you want to do uh, fasting but what is the best way and you must seek that help if you if you're diabetic if you're uh, in a normal condition then yes of course everything is fine um mm. yeah hi uh, sorry uh yeah hi this is ravinesh here uh actually for this uh, for diabetic things uh, i would like to say uh, uh we can try diluted juices or also green juices that will uh, not raise sugar things oh, and after some cool. time yeah and after some time so uh, these things will be gone like so many people are uh, doing this and they are not taking any medicine for diabetes and all and they have uh, like uh, normal now so there are people experiences over that and in this in this group also so many people are uh, practicing and they have overcome their diabetes and so many other things so uh, yeah just initially it happens like when you take uh, sugar, uh, juices also it spikes the uh, diabetes <laughs> but after some time when you are like uh, your body get tuned to that so it's just detox symptoms you can say so uh, slowly you your body get tuned with that and then and the main thing i'll say that is mind when you think that what will happen with that it's sugar and so it will happen to uh, uh, with the body also so the it's not the fruits that uh, spikes the sugar or of diabetes whatever but uh, is the thing what uh, how how you are doing uh, you, you have you should uh, listen to your body also and also uh, one should take care of i mean the process uh, i will say thank you Yeah, Aruna, I would like to ask you something. To ask you something, let's say um, disconnect a little bit from the subject of foods and stuff like that, because our main um, our main line here is actually mental and emotional and spiritual things. So I would love to ask you if a, if a person got uh, exposed even by mistake or just by accident to a piece of negative information or to conversation with a negative person. or even a positive person that just said something negative something that affected me or someone else then what would be the best way to transform this negative energy into the positive one because uh, there are different techniques where you just say to your where either you put a protective shield around you mental protective shield or you just say to yourself this energy does not penetrate me it, it gets transformed into light or something like that so from your experience because that's really important we are surrounded to so much negative energy in the news and the newspapers in the conversation so how would you address this matter yeah yeah true eric um yes yeah, see the thing is we have to build an inner immunity and back to the soul okay so i have to build such a strong sense of self a pure sense of self not an arrogant sense not not the the ego the pride see i'm great but a strong sense of really respecting myself we were having this discussion last night here few of us so what is a strong sense of self respect it means that i respect myself i respect my time i respect my things um i respect my words you know and when we do this that means that if anything is coming towards me then i'm able to deflect that much more easily if i'm in high self respect and uh, as i mentioned in the beginning yeah there is my book conflict resolution and in that you can also have a look there is a section on uh, uh, passive assertive and aggressive behavior and in passive behavior one is in very low self respect and so then anything that comes your way you say yes i'm to blame i'm so sorry i won't do it again and in a way we become subservient we're not really looking at the issue but we're just trying to please the other person in aggressive behavior um i'm dominating i'm controlling i'm trying to be bossy 
and I'm saying, no, no, I'm not at fault. You're the one at fault. You're the one to be blamed. But in assertive behavior, assertive behavior is where I'm respecting myself and I'm respecting you. So if some, something has been said to me, then I might say, oh, you know what? I choose not to be spoken to like this or it's better we don't talk right now. Again, you have to use the right tone, the right words, uh, the right feelings from inside and uh, communicate your message. So it's not two wrongs make a right. It's not they get angry and you get angry and that's it, you know, you turn away, no. So I have to be assertive in, the, in this sense. And I, I put my, my opinion, my thought across. So this can only come if I have, as I said, done this prior work, you know, which is why back to this physical fasting, like you can't just suddenly, you know, go cold turkey, like you have to build your fasting muscles. In the same way, we have to build here, the soul muscles, where I'm just thinking more and more positive, powerful thoughts all the time for myself, for others, for the situation. You know, even if something negative happens now, I just say, no, there must be some benefit in it. This is how I've really trained my mind. There must be a reason why this is happening. So then I'm not getting upset. I'm not getting panicked. Uh, I'm not fretting over what's happened. I just say, no, there's a good reason or there's a good reason this person's late. Um, maybe it's giving me more time, whatever. Like you, you train your mind all the time, you know, to think positive. So then when something does happen, you can really accept it. You can turn it around and, and accept it and say, no, there's some deeper lesson to learn here. What is it? So my answer, long answer, Eric, is yeah, train your mind, build the immunity, constant positive thinking so that in, in the time of eventuality, the positive thinking is already there. A lot of self-talk, positive self-talk. And yeah, that's how you, you build that muscle. Mm. And could you please extend on a little bit on the strategies for building this mighty positive thinking in daily life or cultivating positive self-talk? Because many people find themselves just forgetting about it, just getting swept by negativity. So, um, and then they might say, okay, it's easier said than done. Than done. So um, some techniques, some strategies are needed here. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, what is the reason why you would want to fast? In the same way, why is it that I should pay this attention to my mind and my thoughts? Why is it that I should stick to few thoughts, powerful thoughts, strong thoughts? Because I need to understand the benefit behind it. So first I need to tell myself that, look, I'm not going to go there. I'm not even, I mean, many things come to me. It's not that I'm perfect or it's not that I'm immune to what's happening. Everything comes to me as it comes to everybody else. And what I do is I say now that, okay, full stop. This is really one good method, Eric, full stop, mm -hmm. full stop, but not a comma. Yes. <laughs> comma means uh, okay I'm putting the full stop but but what next uh, or what after that and I'm still continuing with the thoughts but full stop literally means you tell yourself okay you're not going there just like you tell yourself when you're hungry you say no I'm not eating that let me go away from the kitchen let me go away from that food and this is what they say for anybody who's addicted to something right alcohol or whatever like go a uh, walk away from that place you know, don't allow that to be a trigger for you. So in the same way, if there is something I'm not able to cope with, just walk away from that. Walk away from it physically, but also walk away with your mind and say, no, I'm not going to give that extra energy. And what you do is, yes, try to put the full stop. If you can't put the full stop, you start thinking about something else, something positive that's working. In fact, we call it uh, appreciative inquiry where you look at the glass half full. You don't look at the glass half empty. So now you start thinking and say, ah, oh, okay, what was the lesson in that? Ah, oh, what was the learning? And oh, if this hadn't happened, that wouldn't have happened, like something positive. So you really just initially make that effort to turn that thing around in your head, try to find the benefit, try to see the positive and hold on to that. Just focus on that, that's it. 
Yeah, I, I think you have shown us a good example a few minutes ago because we were, to, we were talking about this curfew that you have in Kuwait from the evening till the morning, but then instead of complaining about it, you just said, okay, so it gives us an opportunity to meet together, to be together, to see each other more, right, etc. Et so that's the example of seeing the positive side of everything. Yeah, but also this COVID, I mean, honestly, I have not had a free moment. Like I've just been busy doing things that I wanted to do for a long time. Right. So I'm, of course, I know many have suffered, but um, I just was grateful for the time that I got mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I have things, you know, that were pending. So I was able to catch up. Yeah, so absolutely. And how would you define the why? Why to do that? Why cultivate positive thinking? Because you said how important it is. So if someone has difficulties just defining, defining it for themselves. Yeah, so again, I think one has to sit in silence and ask themselves. For me, Eric, um, for me, I feel there's no other way. Because I have seen how if, if I become negative, I can see what it does to me. I can see what it does to the damage it does to my relationships. I can see what it does to my health. You know, the stress, uh, the BP, the adrenaline. I mean, we can see what it does to us. And I don't want to go there anymore. I choose not to do that. I re That's why I was saying about respect. I respect my body, Eric. Mm -hmm. I respect my body. I don't want to give it that pain anymore. I respect my time. I don't want to go into waste uh, conversation anymore. So I don't want to trigger anything negative or waste that then I have to spend time repairing it. I don't want to think waste because I, I respect my mind. And um, there's a very nice saying um, that goes around on WhatsApp. And that is, I, I won't allow anyone with dirty feet to walk through my mind. Mm. So I'm not going to allow anything or anyone who's said something, done something to, you know, we say take this space without paying rent. You know, they're, they're occupying my mind, right? Something happened and it finished. The incident finished, but we are still holding on to that person in our mind. They're occupying this very precious space in my mind. Why should I allow that? Yeah. That's why I'm saying everything comes back to self-respect, respecting everything about you and yes. uh, not giving away that, that power to that thing. And, and then there's loss of energy, okay? So yeah, one thing, Eric, as I said, um, I respect. And secondly, Eric, yes, I want to become a powerful soul because I want to experiment and really refine my thoughts where I'm able to get things done with my thoughts, Eric. I think there was a time on earth where we were not running with our feet to get things accomplished, but with the power of our mind, we were able to get things accomplished. We were able to attract things towards us. And this is what attracts me. That's why I want to really purify my thoughts. And I don't want to pollute my thoughts with negativity. So that my, my thought is so refined and so clean that it can do the job that it's intended to do. So it's not just about me getting stuff, but, but say I want to send you, Eric, say I want to send you a really powerful thought for your well-being or for your health. Like I want this thought to get to you and I want it to work. This, this is what I'm experimenting with. And the people around me know that and we're trying to do that together. Refine the thoughts, purify the thoughts. What is, what is an optimum pure thought? Have we thought about it? What is an optimum loving thought where, there's, where, there's, where you don't want anything in return? You expect nothing in return. What is that? Have we experimented? Can we really do it? Can we really give it? Do we know what it feels like for ourselves? So these are the experiments. What, what does it really mean to forgive, Eric? What does it mean to forgive and really forget? Have we been able to do that with our pains? I mean, this, this is where we wanna be. We don't want a ball and chain on our feet from the things that we've done in the past. We want to become free. So these are the heights of this kind of experimentations that 
I want to, that's why we meditate. I meditate in the morning at four o'clock, actually sometimes from 3.30 for an hour. We meditate then in the day, we meditate in the evening um, because I believe in it. I believe in empowering myself. I believe in connecting with God, in taking light from the Supreme. I believe in just staying in that power, powerful presence. Actually, if you think about it, Eric, the ultimate fasting, right? It is silence, isn't it? Because as we've been talking in the group, that ultimate fasting is where you don't need anything. Because back to this uh, question of, should I take juice or this? I, we, we call it in the group, it's not fasting, it's feasting, right? Fasting is where it's really abstinence. So in the same way, um, Really, when I'm just, it's not that I'm not thinking, the mind will always be thinking about something, but let it be something very elevated and let it be for a very elevated purpose. If it's not elevated thinking, we shouldn't be thinking at all. Yeah, yeah. And if, for example, if you have a person who wants to go this path, but they find themselves still too much negativity, too much, for example, someone too much reiterating in their mind, chewing on different situations from their day. So what, what would you suggest in such a yes. case? No, I would suggest again, back to really what Hethel had mentioned about movement. So in the same way, I would mention, occupy yourself in some very good activity, positive activity. And of course the best positive activity is to be in service of others. So mentally, you start doing something selflessly, like you start helping other people. Really, when I start helping other people, I come out of my own uh, stuff. And many people have reported this also. Yeah, and, and they do, would... do, do, do you mean in terms of doing or even, even in terms of your thoughts, like to send, to send love and kindness to people at that moment? Yeah, both. Yeah, in thought, Eric, but also physically, practically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if not people like go clean up the beach or, you know, go do something practically, go plant some trees, like do something with your energy and get consumed by, you know, doing something positive for Mother Earth or for others. And you will come out of it yourself, actually, whatever's your pain, <laughs> your depression, you will actually come out of that. So even mentally, yes, if, see, you were saying, if I can't do something with my mind, so that's why I'm saying get into action. But if you can somehow get a grip of your thoughts and be in charge of your mind, then yes, start directing powerful thoughts um, to other people that you, you might think might need some help. Yeah, yeah. And also probably meditation practice, spiritual practices, prayer, meditation, they... Um... They would be really, really, like, regardless of, you know, I think that uh, if we have our certain time for meditation, even one hour a day or something like that, or start with even less, it will affect all our day, all our thinking. Yeah, so I would recommend that um, even if you're new to meditation, right, back to this fasting thing. Again, some people say, uh, if I'm not, if I can't fast, few hours I'm not going to try at all you know if I can't fast like an Olympian I'm not going to fast at all so again just try a few hours and that's great like the other brother was saying he fasts for hours okay fine in the same way you can't sit for long maybe you can't sit for hours on end in meditation but just sit 5 10 15 minutes first thing in the morning when you sit first thing in the morning Again, you feed your mind this, this, these positive affirmations, as I was saying to you. And you can actually create some for yourself that are relevant, pertinent to your life, right? Whatever's going on, whether you have children, family, whatever, you can also direct them, uh, you know, towards that. And sit and just empower your mind in this way. You know, just like we say, we, when we start our day, we want to eat some, some healthy food, not junk food. So food for the, for the soul is powerful thoughts. So let me sit and just create, right? If there's no meditation commentary, if you can't find something on the net, sometimes we waste so much time trying to look for the right meditation commentary. So don't even go there. You 
try and just get accustomed to creating very powerful thoughts for yourself. Five, 10, 15 minutes in the morning, that's it. Just sit quietly, closed eyes, open eyes, doesn't matter. Even just, you know, self-loving thoughts, like, uh, you know, I'm going to do well today. Um, uh, you know, um, let me prepare myself for what is to come. Everything's going to go great. I'm going to visualize that meeting. I'm going to say the right things in the meeting. Whatever it is, just prepare yourself for that day. And then start to do other things like get ready, have breakfast, go to work, whatever. And even this little bit, if you just get a taste of this and then start your day, it's going to go well. Because you've already set that um, direction, let's say, uh, for the day. And again, many people who start meditating, they, they, they comment on this. I mean, people who, you know, just do a few lessons of the meditation course, Eric. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, this Arabic lady, she did just three lessons of the course. And then somehow before coming to the next session, she got into a, a, a little accident. It was just bumper to bumper. But she said in the past, she would have got so angry <laughs> with the other person, the other driver. And she said, you know, now I came out of the car, I was laughing, I was smiling, and uh, we sorted it out calmly. She goes, I would never have done that in the past. So a little bit of meditation, a little bit of self-reflection, even another lady two days ago was telling me, I don't know if she's listening to the talk now, but mm -hmm. I did send her the invite, but she was saying that um, normally, um, she would argue back with her husband, but this time she just sat peacefully. She just sat peacefully and listened. And because she was calm, then the situation, you know, dissolved uh, much more quickly. But if, if, if they got angry, she got angry, then it would have, you know, taken, uh, it would have escalated and taken longer. That's amazing. So, so, so inspiring. Yeah. Just a oh, little yeah meditation yeah okay i would also love to ask you because you mentioned that you uh, wait, usually wake up and get up really really early like early for many for in terms of what many people do like 3 30 4 or 4 a.m what are the benefits of uh, getting up so early and maybe doing some spiritual practices in such an early hour <laughs> okay um Okay, so actually, uh, as I told you, I have a full on timetable. So um, I wake up early because um, the Brahma Kumari's timetable is to have early morning meditation. But that's not the only reason um, I wake up. I, I personally have, have loved waking. I've been waking up in the morning since I was 14. And uh, I just loved it. And so I continued with it from the age of 14. And why I love it, Eric, is because for me, that is really the time for myself. Because in the rest of the day where I'm teaching meditation or with others or I'm meditating in the evening, um, I use that time more, as I told you, to send vibes, um, to send vibes to the planet, etc. But for me, um, that early morning time is all for myself. And it's all about empowering myself and it's all about connecting with God. And when I'm able to do that, I'm able to fill myself. It's like, that's the petrol station. I'm filling myself with fuel, you know, fuel for the soul. So that for the rest of the day, Eric, I have enough to give. You see, when people cannot give love, why can, why can they not give love? It's because they don't have love. If I cannot be peaceful, why can't I be peaceful? Because I don't have enough peace inside of me. You see, love and peace and kindness and, and truth and honesty and compassion, forgiveness, this, this cannot be bought from a supermarket. It doesn't grow on trees. It's right here inside of me, but I'm not cultivating it. Cultivating it means I think about it more. I get in touch with it. It's like um, Aladdin's lamp. It's like you have to polish it. When you polish it, then it can come to life. 
But see, we have forgotten. We have forgotten that we are these qualities, divine qualities. And because we've forgotten, that it's like they're hidden in the attic. You know, I always say, like, you can have a toolbox. You can have some golf clubs. You can have a toolbox. You can have some fancy kitchen equipment. But what if you forget that you have it? It's like not having it. It's as good as not having it, right? So when I remember, and remember means when I remember, when I reconnect with these qualities, and that's what I'm doing at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm reminding myself that I am peace, I am love, I am power. When I reconnect with these qualities, I'm igniting them. And so then in the day when I need it, I have that resource. I can, I can go back in and, and you know, claim that back and then use it for where I need to use it. You know, um, Eric, there's also something that is called the bankruptcy of the soul. Bankruptcy of the soul is when, you know, I don't have the inner powers. We all know what's the right thing to do, but we're not able to do it. We all know we shouldn't hurt, we shouldn't take, we shouldn't steal, we should give more, we should be kind, we should forgive. We all know what we need to do, but why we can't do it? You know, same with the fasting. When we fast, we say, I know I shouldn't eat that, but oh, I'll just have one. <laughs> I just have the one date. I'll do it. Why? Why there isn't that self-control? Because there isn't the power. And, and this morning I was sharing with them in our class, like, you know, once you have power in the house, then you can turn on the lights. You know, you can use the iron, you can use the stove, you can turn on the kettle. You first need power, you need the electricity. In the same way, the soul needs power. Where am I gonna get this power from? So one is like a really strong sense of self, creating only the highest quality of thoughts. And then secondly, yes, connect with God in, in whatever way you want, in whatever faith you are. Connect with this pure uh, godly light and just sit under that light and feel that that light is washing over you. Like when we sunbathe, we're taking in the, the sunlight, right? Um, the light, the UV light, whatever. And in the same way, when I sit under God's light, I feel that I am being uh, recharged with God's light. So the, this is the reason I wake up, Eric. And then after that, we have our class <laughs> and then I'm meeting people. So for me, it's, it's, it's a good way to start the day. Amazing, amazing. Would you please elaborate more about, you mentioned the law of attraction, because sometimes I feel that um, there is some kind of, there might be some kind of shallow understanding of it, where I think that I will just think strongly, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich and, and suddenly I will be rich. So that's, that's, um, that's uh, the impression I get from the popular culture about this law of attraction. So when you say law of attraction, what do you mean in terms of thinking, in terms of our inner intention, in terms of how it works from the universal standpoint? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, Eric, see, I don't believe in that, uh, the secret, um, whatever, documentary, movie, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in when you, when you really set the right intention and then you add the thrust of powerful thoughts, then it has to manifest. So when we have a pure thought, we call it pure thought, let's say pure intention is pure thought. When we have a pure thought for something, and really this is my experience here also, and on the spiritual journey, that when I'm doing it for the good of everyone, for the good of others, then it's more likely to manifest. But when I say me, me, I, I, <laughs> it's less likely to manifest. 
So my point here is that, yeah, when, when I say um, for healing of someone, healing the planet, uh, so more people can benefit, you know, let's get that house, let's get that, that hall, whatever, for, for everybody's use, then yes, Eric, it, it, it comes together like this. It's just perfect timing and the drama just falls into place and it, it happens. So this is what I really want to say that when you are asking for something, you have, to check. you have to check, is it just for my selfish motive to become a millionaire? Because then what, you know? I, I, after I become a millionaire, then what? what am, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna take the millions with me? No. So I can say though, I can say, yes, I want money to come my way so that I can put it to a higher use. There's nothing wrong in saying that. So in other words, you are just going to be the channel, money's gonna come your way, then you're gonna put it to some better use, higher use for everyone's benefit. And then it does happen. So I think this is very important in law of attraction that firstly, pure, not selfish, selfless thoughts, and to trust that it's going to be for the good of all, including yourself. Like it's not just about me uh, or, or not just about others. Everybody's going to benefit and then it works. Okay. That was very inspiring. And my last question for now, and then maybe some other people want to ask questions as well. You said in the beginning, you were talking about a, um, offering, um, offering our food and offer, offering our drinks to God. Um, <laughs> could, you, could, could you elaborate on that in terms of, uh, like, regardless of the faith of the person, what would be the universal principles of offering of purifying our foods and drinks by offering them to the divine? Sure, yeah, I'd love to answer that actually, Eric, because um, I think it's so important. Um, and I think it's very much a part of this seminar. And I felt in the beginning, I didn't want to spend too long on it, but now that, yeah, we, we are a bit more relaxed. Um, yeah, so Eric, the reason, as I said, why we need to offer the food is really to practice gratitude. Like we should really um, appreciate, you know, what we are being given by Mother Earth. And I, it, you know, I find it amazing, like every leaf and every fruit, it takes so long to grow. Like how long does it take for the tree to grow and then for it to, you know, bear this fruit and I, I just eat it within seconds. So let me at least, you know, spend a few moments saying thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you to my great fortune that I have food. And thank you to God that he's taking care of me. And Eric, we actually, uh, and we were doing this also before when I was living at home, but uh, also in the meditation centers, Eric, whatever we cook, we first offer that to God and then we eat. So we do a special meditation around that food where we say thank you and uh, allow um, God's light to fall on that. And then we eat it. And let me tell you a, a story, Eric, that came my way yesterday. So there was a person, he was walking to the temple. He had made him, he himself had made these sweets, okay, laddus, let's say. So he had made these small sweets and he was walking to the temple. And somebody asked him, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to the temple. And they said, what are you, what are you holding? And he said, well, I've made these sweets and I'm going to carry them with me and offer them to God. So the guy says, can I have one now? He said, no, you can't. I first have to offer them to God and then you can have one. Okay, so he goes to the temple. He puts them in front of God. He thanks God, right? Then he just takes the box. He walks out again. Again, he meets his friend 
And he says, okay, now you can have this. He says, this is God's holy food. So I want to tell everybody in this group, he took the same thing into the temple. He brought out the same thing, but now it had changed its form. It wasn't his sweets anymore, right? It was now holy food from God. So what has God taken? How did God transform that food? He took out the arrogance. He took out the ego of I and my. Right? So when we offer something to God, I'm, I'm removing from it, oh, I cooked, it's mine, it's for me, it's, I did it for you, so I'm removing that attachment. And now when we eat from that food, we are eating it as though God is providing me that food. Now imagine that energy that, that's going into you. So you're not just feeding the body, but you're feeding the soul with that pure divine energy. And also, let me tell you, Eric, in the early days when the Brahma Kumari's founder, Brahma Baba, when he started the organization, he had, he had a lot of money and he invested it into the organization. Then after 14 years, that money ran out because they were not doing service. They were not going out. They were just living in community together for 14 years. And that money was supporting all of them. But then after 14 years, when the money ran out, they literally didn't have much to eat every day. And then what he did is in the morning, there was no breakfast. So what he did is he would tell uh, everyone, okay, we are going to go out for a walk. And he would tell the cook, just make me some popcorn. And so in big tins, they would carry popcorn. And then they were walking, then they would be sitting on the mountain, and he would play this game, Eric, of shooting the popcorn into the, like playing, like, can you catch it in your mouth? And, you know, a few hours would pass just having fun, laughter, playfulness, and they'd come back at lunchtime. By then something would come in the post and then they would make lunch. So what was sustaining them, Eric? It was the love. It was a little bit of food, which was popcorn, but it was filled with love. It was, like we say, it is blessed food. So when we eat blessed food, uh, it's really nourishing the soul. When we eat pure food, Eric, it's really purifying the thoughts. And I have seen this also. I have suggested, say to mothers, mothers at home, why don't you start offering the food to God before you feed your family? And really the temperament of their husband, their children, it starts to change. They start to calm down more. Just by taking a few moments of offering this food and feeding it uh, then next, I mean, after uh, to the family. Mm. So really there's a lot of benefits of um, putting pure energy and even whatever I have in front of me. Um, as I said, to remove all those negative energies of, of greed and, um, you know, like yeah. all the energies it, it's traveled through. Mm -hmm. Actually, Eric, another story, if you, if you don't mind, just a quick one. Sure. And sure. this was, this, there was this story of this priest. And this priest, um, he, it, I think 15th or 16th century. So this priest was also offering his food, Eric. And as he was offering his food, people around him thought that he was doing some black magic. Like when, before he ate, he was saying some verses. And, and so they thought he was doing black magic and they put him in prison. When they put him in, this is a real story. It's from the water documentary. And when they put him in prison, again, he was only given a little bit of water and uh, one piece of bread. And again, before he ate this food, he was saying his prayers before eating the food. And he still lived. He lived for like a month. I mean, the poor thing, they, they ended up, uh, you know, killing him because they, they thought, why is he still alive? He must have some, you know, 
and they couldn't believe that he was just, you know, um, saying grace to his food. So there are stories, you know, relating to how we have a little bit, but if we really uh, put it, like give it pure energy, God's grace, gratitude, then it goes a long way in, in feeding us. Amazing. So in terms of cultivating a practical habit of uh, blessing the food or offering the food to the divine, what would you suggest, regardless of the religion of the person, what would you suggest, like uh, in, in terms of even like phrasing, how, how to phrase it, because there are some people who are not familiar with those customs. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I, I just say like, you know, I just say thank you God for feeding me. Um, thank you for providing this, may it nourish my soul and body and may it benefit everybody who's eating it, may it affect their mind in a positive way. I mean, just some positive statements like mm -hmm. that. I, even I, even I, spontaneous, like whatever appeals to you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's, no, yeah there's no set um, mantra or anything like that. Just mm -hmm. sheer gratitude. Yeah. Sheer okay. gratitude. Um, yeah. Focusing okay. on the positive effect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, maybe someone else has any questions. I just wanted to add that um, I, post, I, I saw in the comments that uh, some people want to join the fasting group. So I, I posted there on the chat my phone number. It starts with plus 972. So just look it up there and send me a WhatsApp message with your name because otherwise if you just leave your phone number there on the chat, they won't be able to add you. So you need to send me the um, WhatsApp message with your name to the number that appears there on the chat and then I will happily add you. I just wanted to, um, to say that. And now let's go over to our um, audience if you have any more questions for Aruna. Uh, hi, Eric. Uh, uh, Aruna, good evening. Hi. I just want to add uh, one thing about um, the law of attraction. Um, Eric, the first, I will, I will put on the camera. The first thing is that uh, regarding law of attraction, just you say, as from today, I am going to meet only positive people around me. The first law of attraction. And you will see it will happen. happen. It will avoid you to meet negative people. Even the people that you think they have negative attitude, they will be transformed into positive attitude. This is the first law of attraction. Then Amazing. you will see everything will go on. Amazing. I just wanted to add this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sounds really good. Thank you. Thank very, you, very uplifting. <laughs> um, also, Eric, I just remembered uh, you. You must have heard of Professor Emoto. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. All his water experiments. Exactly. So the words that worked, right, was um, love and uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. so type this word or write it on your bottle or, or your big water bottle or something, then this changes the molecular structure. Right, right, right. Anyone else, guys? I can just add another thing, mm -hmm. one more thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I just want to add also, you know, uh, regarding offering the food to God. Just have only one thought that I am grateful from the mother earth until the bread that I have, I'm having in my hand, how many people has been involved in this before this piece of bread is coming in my hand. So just be grateful from the beginning of mother earth, the wheat and every, every step. And you will see there will be a very big difference. Then right. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much. So uplifting. I think everybody's content, Eric. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably a good point to end. Okay, Aruna, so, so towards the end, I would love to tell us, first of all, a little bit about your books, 
because you have authored six or seven books. I don't remember if you mentioned how many books. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, go to the blog. Uh, uh, yeah, some, uh, guys, please mute yourself. Yeah. If anyone is, uh, yeah, I think now it will be fine. Yeah. So, yeah, you can go to the blog, you can go to the um, Brahma Kumari's um, media site, which is inspiredstillness.com, or you can go to my blog, which is it's time to meditate.org or arunaladva.org. And uh, there's lots of material there. There's, there's, well, the books you have to purchase from the uh, Inspired Stillness, but it, it will direct you there. But uh, there's lots of freebies. There's lots of meditation commentaries. There's lots of uh, good stuff for reading. And as I told you, there's the download of my conflict resolution book, which is for free, which you can download and use. And many people have benefited from it. Um, many, many downloads already. Um, so that's that. And then, of course, there's the meditation that I'm connected with. So, yes, I am a uh, Brahma Kumari's meditation teacher. Um, so we teach meditation as well as lots of other self-development programs. So in Kuwait, uh, we are known as Harmony House Meditation Center. And uh, yeah, well, you can be in touch with us and... I mean, in every, wherever you are, actually, there will be a meditation center. Um, so if you want to know which is your center in your country, you can email me and I can put you in touch with them. And if a person wants to get a personal guidance specifically from you or um, something of this sort, is it possible? <laughs> Short, yeah. <laughs> Short and sweet, yeah. As I said, yeah, my program is full, but if there's one or two questions, I'm happy to answer that. But normally I don't uh, really do personal uh, counseling, Eric. Mm. Okay, okay. And also I wanted to ask uh, if the program that you mentioned, if they're available online in terms of if anyone wants to meditate, to start meditating, to learn those particular techniques that you are involved in. So yeah, you can go to brahmakumaris.org and uh, the, you know seminars from there or as i said you can just follow my blog also i put things up there as well that i'm doing mm -hmm. so you can follow on that follow on my facebook aruna um it's time or it's time aruna something like that um you can follow on that as well yeah yeah so we'll post all the, all the links all those links below this video if you are interested it will be on the youtube channel of the weekly fasting group and uh, all those links will be there so it will be easier for you okay Aruna, so thank you so so much it was so uplifting and so so inspiring and uh, really really life-changing so and guys if you are on the fasting group if you have any additional questions after watching the webinar of course you are welcome to post them and then aruna will be able to relate to them so thank you so much and love and light to everyone. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, Eric, thank you also, um, because I was fasting, uh, but I was fasting once in a while. But since joining the group, um, we, I plus others here, we are fasting more regularly. And of course, lots of benefit. So a lot of blessings to you, Eric, for managing the group, keeping us on track. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a blessing for me to be doing that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Namaste. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.